quick side note for all manufacturers out there. Your stuff is probably half to three quarters less cool than you actually think it is. Just because you made it doesn't make it cool. Uh, we're talking about how many different permutations of pieces of metal and springs can we put together that launch a projectile downrange using the exact same technology that we've been using for 150 years. It's really not that interesting. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. It's great to be here as always. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope that you all had a great 4th of July weekend and you kept all of your fingers. We're going to have some fun with today's video because we're going to be discussing some gun industry drama the last gun industry drama video I did, you guys really liked, and I've got a fresh one for you. And in doing this video, you and I are going to work together to hopefully change the gun industry forever. That's a big intro. <laughs> we're going to hear a quick word from today's sponsor, and then we're going to roll into what exactly it is that I'm talking about. Today's video is brought to you by Excess Sights, and I've been using Excess for almost a decade now. And I will admit that when I first started being introduced to excess sights, I didn't get it. It wasn't until I took a force on force class that was a low light class that I was like, oh, there's no other site in the world. This is what we have to use. And I've been using them ever since. They got a whole bunch of profiles out there uh, that will fit your needs. I personally use their big dot sites and I wanted to bring to your guys' attention their Independence Day sale. It will run from July 1st through the 8th. So you make sure that you go out there and use that sale to great effect to stock up on your night sites. Special thanks to XS for making today's video possible. Okay, so I got a little bit of setup for you. If you have been tracking or if you don't pay a whole lot of attention, the gun industry operates off of a show season where there are these uh, trade shows everybody attends. They're a real drag for people who actually have to go. I'm kind of like a voluntary participant. And oftentimes, members of the media are invited to this, this thing. And having a, tr a show season isn't really anything new or anything out of the ordinary what's out of the ordinary is how far behind the gun industry's show season actually is as a as it relates to the various elements that it integrate i attended gun con recently it was a great show had a great time it's among the top shows it, as far as cutting the edge on what it what it brings to the table for various uh, people who attend, not only uh, members of the media, vendors, uh, members of the public, you know, all of the above, right? And there's a little bit of something in there for everybody. There were some people at GunCon on the vendor side that seemed to think that guys like me need to do their job differently. I've been doing this for a decade, and I've learned several things about making content. And one of the core tenets of making content for an audience is the audience will tell you if you're doing a good job, whether you are making things that they want to watch or not. And for a vendor to go to a trade show and think in their brain that my job is to come around and interview them along with everybody else who attended there as a sponsor or a vendor, is outside of reality. So what I did is I put up a poll on the community tab. It's still active. Please go over there and vote. So I'm going to explain to you my philosophy when it comes to trade shows. As a content creator that's trying his best to simultaneously run a business and give his audience what they want to see, which is everything from the news that impacts them to new cool things that are coming out that they might be interested in and help companies bring the best product they possibly can to market. How I think about trade shows is a networking opportunity. You're going to bring your stuff. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to see things that I think are cool or not cool. And if I don't think that they're interesting, then I'm not going to engage with you. Maybe you also have something that is really cool, which quick side note for all manufacturers out there, your stuff is probably half to three quarters less cool than you actually think it is. Just because you made it doesn't make it cool. Uh, we're talking about how many different permutations of pieces of metal and springs can we put together that launch a projectile downrange using the exact same technology that we've been using for 150 years. It's really not that interesting. But let's say that we found the small percentage of things that are actually interesting. Your concept is that 
you and me are going to cram into this video frame with your Whizbang 5000, and you're going to give a dissertation on what it does to my audience while there's a thousand people in the room shouting at each other and basically ruining all of the audio. What experience do I have with that product? Five minutes, probably less. Have I had any actual real world experience with it? Have I even taken it to the range? You probably don't give a shit about that, right? That's not something that is entertaining. It's not something that's compelling. It's not something that's even sensible to listen to. It's not even enjoyable to to even listen to when you roll down the road. Even if you're not watching the visuals, if you just listen to the audio, it's not pleasing to the ear. So that is not a piece of content that I think that my audi- my audience wants to watch. And that's kind of the basis of the whole poll. Booth reviews are da 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 dead. Ranged reviews at a industry event are also dead. You've got a thousand people shooting guns while we're trying to do some kind of concept on your product. It doesn't work. I don't care if you have quiet time and and loud time, suppressed time, unsuppressed. It doesn't matter. You cannot draw meaningful conclusions about a product from a few minutes with it at a booth or at a range. You can't do it. It takes hundreds and thousands of rounds to come to any meaningful conclusion about the performance of any product, which is the meaningful information that you guys actually show up to find. So no, I'm not going to do an interview with a product and its manufacturer at some trade show somewhere. And for the industry as a whole or the vendors to think that that's something that you guys would even fall for shows me that they're not companies that I would want to work with. So if you are a marketing or, or, or a social media manager or any booth manager, whatever it is, right? Whatever your bullshit title is at whatever company it is, if you think that you're coming into an industry event like that where you're going to generate a whole bunch of content and stuff like that, you are just flat out wrong. Because even if you've got the shills that will make it for you, for you, eyeballs will not follow. They, the people will not watch it. Just look at the decline of like shot show booth video. Nobody watches that crap. That's why I haven't made a shot show booth video in years because it's not something that people are interested in. What they're interested in is if we have a conversation at the trade show and then you send me your whiz bang 5,000, I beat the hell out of it for a couple months. And then I do a video on my experiences with it. That's what the people actually want to see. They don't really care about your shiny new product pitch that you're given at some industry event. It does not work. It has never worked. And we should just flat out refuse to do it. So to actually cover the results of the poll, as of the filming of this video, there's 876 votes. 41% of you say that the way that I cover uh, trade shows is good, which is I basically show up, I take a bunch of pictures of things that I think are cool, maybe one or two sentences about it, because that's all I really have experience with it to kind of give you an idea if it's interesting. And then if you tell me that it's interesting, then I'm going to go out and perhaps run that company down. So as far as that relates to a trade show, that means manufacturer, this is your opportunity to get my email address, convince me that your your uh, your product is worth my audience's time, not my time, my audience's time that I should go out and work on your product. And then the second most popular response was, uh, it's 2024. Why do we still have trade shows? So in closing today, why does this matter to you? Because you know me, I'm not going to make the damn booth video anyway, right? So your viewing experience isn't going to change whatsoever, but how it impacts you is in an indirect way. There are companies out there that spend millions of dollars on these trade shows. Should a company attend a couple trade shows a year? I think so. But they shouldn't attend every trade show every year. And their expectations of those trade shows should be metered. They should not go in there thinking they're going to get a whole bunch of free content out of it. They shouldn't go in there thinking that they're going to generate all this pump and hype for their their product. That's unrealistic. They're there to network. By spending that kind of money, they flush it down the toilet, they waste it, 
and then in return, they're not getting the ROI, the return on investment that they thought they were going to get in the form of marketing. And because of that, they end up short, they have to raise prices, and generally speaking, the whole machine does not operate as smoothly as it could have been if they had just gone out and purchased the proper assets and paid the people to do the work that they should have done in the first place instead of buying into the whole trade show narrative. That might have worked, again, 40 years ago when you were uh, being run by a whole print conglomerate that uh, encapsulated testing, uh, field testing and media and all that sort of stuff all together. That consortium is no longer here for the better. I would say the audiences are not buying it. They don't care about what happens at a trade show. They care about the meaningful information that people can generate from their experiences with your product. And in order to do that, you need to get your head out of the clouds or out of your butt when it comes to thinking about what should be done and what the proper place of a trade show actually is. Thank you guys for your help. Please go over and uh, use that poll. And if you are one of my industry friends, send this to a manufacturer. I think that we should put them in a room with nothing but a chair and one light overhead and a screen and make them force feed this to them. Because I know I'm right. That isn't arrogant whatsoever. <laughs>